I want to take you guys through a little journey. The last few, I would say five to six months have been kind of interesting for me to get me to the point of having the level of confidence that I have in this. There's a guy named Dom and Dom is, you know, he's the chairman of the board of this network called IOTA, right? Now we've all heard of IOTA. Uh, IOTA has been around for a long, long time, 2017, right? They're, they were one of the first, if maybe they, the very first DAG. Kind of their shtick or their pitch was that they were creating this internet of things, right? They have very, very fast transaction speeds. So smart cities, things like that, you know, that they were going to work with car companies, all sorts of different things. And they did manage to get a whole lot of really important partnerships. However, I think they may have been a little bit ahead of their time. End of the 2017 run, we go through the 2018, 2019 bear market and the new narrative emerges, which are these alternate layer one EVM chains. We have DeFi summer in 2020. We have Phantom absolutely rip, um, which is where I sat. Anyone that was around when I got into Phantom and rode that whole wave, you should be doing pretty well unless you round tripped it. And for a guy like me that, that rode that whole thing, and, and I, I still have substantial Phantom holdings because I believe that that's going to be a winner in the future, but it's not going to be that 200x winner that it was the very first time the network launched that is a very very rare thing to find fast forward a little bit dom uh reaches out to us on on twitter apparently he knew about ftm alerts he was a fan of you know kind of what we do did with phantom he said hey we're launching this layer one evm network and i'm like all right cool there's a lot of layer ones out there no big deal you know we'll go ahead and check into it we start having some calls with them so the iota foundation is very very smart Let's just put it that way. These guys know their shit. Uh, they're good at what they do. They've been around for a while. They're well capitalized. Essentially, they pivoted to create a smart contract layer on top of their DAG, but they can't implement it directly onto IOTA. And so what are they doing? What they did is they carbon copied what they call the Tangle, which is the DAG, onto a new network called Shimmer. What they're going to be doing, and I'll explain a little bit about this to you, um, but they're going to be very soon, they just released a test net today, uh, releasing an EVM layer on top of this carbon copy tangle. And so essentially the way that this works, it's not going to be like your traditional EVM chain. And what I'm looking for here, what I'm looking for is something to check all the boxes as to, you know, the, the solidly forks are great, but there's something I'm going to play in, right? They're not going to lay the foundation of what I'm hoping to build upon. I'm going to play in those. This is one that has struck me so deeply that I'm 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 letting it lay the foundation of where I think this is going to go, okay? So, obviously DAGs are very very fast, uh, the time to finality is very quick, but the way that this works is the, the layer 1 is the actual consensus layer itself, which they call the tangle. Everything is going to be built on top of that with the EVM layer. You can kind of think of these as layer 2s, right? So that you can there's they're all EVM compatible, but you can use EVM. You can do, uh, what's the other one, Clay? Blossom. Rust. It's, Rust, it's, right? Yeah so, so, yeah, so basically the EVM is, is a flexible design. So it supports Solidity, supports Rust. There's a lot of different programming languages you can work on. <clears throat> right. I think M Move is, is Move the one that, I, yeah, I think that one may be coming in as well. Here's what's really important about this. <clears throat> so this is going to deploy. They just deployed the test net. Obviously, a test net, the reason for the test net is uh, shit's going to break, right? Uh, and so they want you to go out, test this and break some shit and come back. Here's what really struck me about this. So, so SMR is the shimmer token. And I have decided to allocate a portion of my portfolio strictly into the SMR token, almost to an obsessive degree. When it actually hit me what's going on, I started really going nuts. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to accumulate. So it's on Bitfinex, but if you're in the US, that's a non-starter. So I have been playing the Russian roulette of Bit4X for <laughs> the last couple of months to try and accumulate this token. There's some really interesting things about this network and the way that it's going to work. Number one, it has a massive inbuilt community. They're launching with a pre-built DeFi ecosystem. So this is a site called Ooh. Tangleverse.io, right? So, and this is not gonna be completely comprehensive, but these are projects that are ready to launch as soon as the EVM mainnet goes live. Okay. So these are all just coming right in. There's multiple DEXs, there's balancer, there's lending uh, platforms. There's all sorts of various shit that's going to be launching on there. Um, secondly, IOTA community is huge. 
they're very, very big. I mean, there's probably 10,000 plus that are active. Uh, if I had to take a guess, a lot of them have been holding tokens for a long time and, and really didn't get to play in DeFi. So for a guy like me that likes to make videos and kind of educate people on how shit works, that's a prime opportunity for me. So the cool thing about this network, all of your transactions are randomized. And what that means is MEV cannot exist, right? There's no mempool ordering transactions, things like that, that happen. It has extremely high throughput because there's going to be multiple layer twos deployed upon the layer one consensus chain. But what's cool about this is even though I'm likening them to, let's say, uh, a subnet or a supernet, something like that, it's completely bridgeless. You don't mm -hmm. have to go through a bridge to go from one layer two to the next. Another thing about this is every single token that's deployed on the network is deployed, for lack of a better term, similar to a base token on another network, right? So if you're, if you're, um, transacting in USDC, what you're really doing is you're transacting with an account of ledger based upon a smart contract. And that smart contract has rules in it, right? So if, you know, OFAC doesn't like your address because, you know, somebody sent you money that touched tornado cash, they can turn you off because that's what the smart contract is designed to do, not on Shimmer. These are base tokens, right? They're all native tokens of the network. So they're all first class citizens as opposed to running through an ERC-20. Yeah. There's a whole lot of really, really interesting stuff that's within this. But for, for a guy like me, here's what I'm looking at. Do I have the, the ability to get into a narrative that's going to be massive before anyone else knows about it. And we're not a big channel. So this isn't like banter talking about this, right? Where 40,000 people are going to go learn about it. There's 77 of you on here. This, this token was airdropped to people that uh, staked their IOTA tokens. And the airdrop mm -hmm. happened months ago. We've got not too many people outside of the IOTA community that knows about this layer one that's about to launch. We have the IOTA Foundation basically staking their future on making this the most badass thing that's ever existed. And we've got a token where most of the people that 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 uh, claim the airdrop and wanted to sell it have sold it. And it's finding this really nice little bottoming process right now. Now, this isn't going to be an overnight thing. Uh, and it's heavily, heavily, heavily dependent upon the success of the layer one. But if it wins, if it happens, like I think it's going to happen because we've gotten to know the, the IOTA community and the IOTA Foundation very well over the last few months. I think there's a very rare opportunity here. I, I would totally agree. So I want to I want to break down a few things you said just to make sure that they make sense to people because we throw around acronyms and, and assume that everybody understands. But like, so so no MEV, so minor extractable value. So basically, MEV is a dynamic that allows miners to kind of maximize their profits by determining the order of transactions on a blockchain network to their advantage. So basically, you can get front run. Uh, and you know when you're when you're doing a transaction, and there is no MEV uh, with Shimmer Network. So like that's for exchanges, that's a huge piece. For users, that's a huge piece. Austin, is that how you would explain it? Yeah, dude. If you go over on Ethereum, right, and you want to buy a token, and you forget to set your slippage to 0.5 percent, and you ac accidentally set it to, to 5 percent, the second you send that through, it goes to something called a mempool, and the people that can these these bots can read the mempool see exactly what you're buying and what they'll do it's called a sandwich attack they will go in they will purchase the token drive up the price you'll come in and do whatever the hell you'll come in behind them trying to buy so you'll drive it up more and then they're going to sell into your order and they're going to do all of this rapidly and what they're going to do is they're going to extract value out of your order so if you thought you were getting 300 tokens you might only get 280 yeah right and so you've got to use these custom rpcs like um should I forget the names now, but that don't send them through to the mempool. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes into stuff like this. None of that exists on yep. Shimmer because of the way that the, the transactions work. There's, there's randomness built into the network. Yeah. And, and, and like when you think about Ethereum token on Ethereum, that is a main net token. So that, that is, you know, USDC on Ethereum is an ERC 20 token and, and everything else on Ethereum is an ERC 20 token. So to Austin's point, uh, if they if OFAC wanted to turn off your access to USDC because it's ERC twenty, they can. Uh, in this in this scenario, this is like own your crypto, own your coins. Like everything is a main net token, uh, bridgeless, fee-less across you know from the layer ones to to any layer two that's expanded upon it. And someone asked in the comments, like, is it a Kusama, Kusama to Polkadot type relationship? And the answer is yes. Yes. Between, um, you know between Shimmer and IOTA. 
Uh, and, you know, but, you know, for me, it was like in the beginning, it was like, well, this is a crowded space. Like how many layer ones can there be? But the what, what really kind of like got me excited is there is such a thing. And we're seeing it with, with, with a lot of the layer twos that are out now as a second mover advantage. Mm -hmm. where people have, have been able to watch what works, watch what doesn't, and innovate on the things that are really good and make them even better. Uh, and I can tell you there's a ton of smart, smart people that are working on this thing that uh, the the actual community itself is is uh, ravenous and massive and super excited. And it seems like a really exciting opportunity. And so I'm, you know, I'm in I'm in the same camp. Uh, and, you know, anything that's coming, you know, obviously, to your point, Austin, like it's completely dependent on the success of the layer one. And so that's, you know, we have to, you have to highlight that. Yeah. And I want to I want to touch on a couple of question so when the mainnet actually launches it's all going to run just like every other network runs it'll you'll put an rpc in a metamask it'll run through metamask you'll bridge with multi-chain yada 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 right right now that's not the way that it is because the evm mainnet is not launched right so to accumulate shimmer tokens you have to use something called the firefly wallet and if you go to shimmer.network right up here where the hell is it resources firefly shimmer wallet and what you you can you can store shimmer in this wallet basically it has ledger and everything that you would need what's going to happen is so your your shimmer addresses are not ox addresses they they start with smr and what they're going to do is they're going to put from my understanding kind of like an alternate you're going to have like an alternate id on top of your shimmer so you're going to have like your ox address which corresponds with your underlying smr address you don't really need to know that because it's all going to run through metamask anyhow so it's going to look and feel the same way but here's my point we're going to get a lot of people that are deploying on this network for a few reasons one it's a new network people want to deploy two there's a shitload of money that's ready to deploy on anything iota does because their community is absolutely nuts and three there's going to be a lot of first mover advantage okay right now we're at that place to where the narrative still has to take shape but in my mind as somebody who's had a lot of contact with the iota foundation we have weekly calls with them i've heard enough i know that this has massive massive potential and so it was enough for me to allocate a double digit percentage of my portfolio into the SMR token for a number of reasons. One, I believe there will be heavy appreciation, obviously. Uh, but number two, there's going to be a massive DeFi ecosystem that's about to launch. And guess who's going to, to really reap those rewards? Whoever's ready with capital to deploy. It was that way with Phantom, man. When Phantom launched and I had a bunch of Phantom, like psh, it's go time, baby. Let's rock and roll. And I did. And it was great. And, and if, but that feels like a once in a lifetime opportunity. This feels like it wasn't a once in a lifetime opportunity, that that opportunity may be coming back. And so anyone that missed that massive shit your pants run that we had on Phantom, I'm not saying it'll do the same thing. I'm not saying it'll be a winner, but I'm telling you, I've heard enough to believe enough in it to know that I'm here for it, man. I'm ready. I'm positioned. Yeah. I, I mean, I would even say if you missed Arbitrum, like if you, you know, there's a few arbitrage protocols that I got into early and just, just buy specul you know, more speculation than anything that, that have worked out pretty well. Uh, yeah. And this is another one of those, of, of those type of opportunities. Yeah.